Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to sign into your Google account for the first time. So first things first, we want to head to google.com. And you can see in the top right hand corner, we have this blue sign in button. We'll go ahead and click the blue sign in button. And your email address is going to be the first initial of your first name and your full last name at students.mcts.edu. So first initial of your first name and full last name at students.mcts.edu. So for the student I'll use for this demo is going to be demo first name, last name is student, so demo student. So that email address is going to be dstudent at students.mcts.edu. So again, first initial of your first name and your full last name at students.mcts.edu. And the password for in incoming freshmen to our full-time academies and any first-year juniors in our shared time programs, your initial password is going to be WELCOME2020, and that's WELCOME2020 with a capital W. Again, this is strictly for incoming freshmen and for first-year um, for anyone that's a first year student in a shared time program. So then we'll just go ahead and click next. We're going to be brought to this page to accept the terms and agreements. You'll just hit accept here. And then we're going to be prompted to set our own password. So here you can set a password of your choice. Once you have your password filled out, you can just go ahead and click change password and that'll be your password moving forward. So once that password is set, um, you can see we're signed into our account. And from here, we can access all of our Google applications and specifically our Gmail here will show us our email with our new Google account email address. The first time you enter Gmail, you're going to, you're going to have to accept some settings. And there you go, you're into your Gmail account. So that's how you sign into your Google account or your Gmail account for the first time. Thank you very much. Hello. Today I want to show you how to set up Google Classroom using Google Chrome Web Apps. If you haven't done so already, please open a new window so you can follow along throughout the presentation. At any time, please feel free to skip ahead to the next segment or pause the video. To see what's covered in the video, please take a look at the description below. I have included timestamps for each segment of the video. Now, without further ado, Let's get started. To access your Google Classroom, first you need to log into your Google account, which can be accessed from the Google homepage. After logging into your account, locate the menu button, which is in the upper right hand corner. It consists of three by three squares. Inside of the menu, find the classrooms icon. If you do not see it right away, please scroll through the menu. Another thing to take into consideration is you can customize your apps menu and move around your classrooms as well as other icons to your own liking. Now you're ready to join your Google Classroom. Now that you have logged in, you are ready to join your Google Classroom. If this is your first time logging in, you will see a screen similar to the one in front of you. You need to accept your class invite before gaining access to your Google Classroom. If you have already done so, please skip to the next session. After logging in, you will be brought to the dashboard where all of your materials can be found. Now that you have joined your classroom, you are ready to get started on your first assignment.
After a successful login, you will be brought to your classroom's dashboard. The dashboard page is what you will normally see after you have successfully logged into your classroom. You will find that the most common form of communication is through your classroom stream, where each post can be seen by staff or student. If you are not on your streams menu, please select the stream option, which is located at the top of the screen alongside the classwork and people options. You will not see the option that is labeled grades. This option is only available for teachers. Another way that you could communicate directly would be through your people option, where you can send a direct message to your teachers as well as your fellow classmates. Now that we have completed the basic setup for your Google Classrooms account, if you have not joined your class, please do so before following these next steps. If you are up to date with the rest of the how-to videos, please proceed. Now that you have accessed your Google Classrooms account, you will be accessing and viewing your assignments. Between the stream and the people options, you will see an option for classwork. You will click on classwork and below you will see a vast list of past, current, and future assignments. For those of you who do not see the specific assignment listed, you are going to click on your classroom drive folder and from there the option should be available to you for you to either save, download, or copy the document before you. If you continue to have any further questions, feel free to contact the help desk. Hello, welcome to the Google Calendar how-to video, where you will learn how to start, edit, and use Google Calendars daily. Before we can get started, you must log into your Google Classrooms account from the Google homepage. After logging in and selecting the Calendar option, you will be brought to the Google Calendar homepage where you will see your personalized calendar in front of you. If you take a look to the left, you will see your main calendar functions. At the top, you will click on the Create button. In this menu, you will see options to create an event, out of office request, reminder, task, and appointment slot. Now that we've gone through the basics of Google Calendars, let's get started with creating your very first event. First things first, we need to add a title. Next, after adding a title, you will see an option to change your date and time to fit your own liking. Below that, you can also opt for the event to take place all day and for it to repeat either daily, weekly, monthly, annually, or every day. Next, if you have any other students or staff included in this event, you can add them here so that they too will receive a notification for a calendar event. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with the Google Meets Please refer to the Google Meet how-to video, which is located on the Student Tools page. In the event that your event is in person, you can add a location. And last but not least are your custom notifications. You can choose the color of your notification. You can include whether you want to appear busy or free to your classmates or staff. The visibility option is to include whether you want your event to appear public to fellow classmates or staff, or if you want this event to appear private so that only you yourself can view it. 
And for those of you who have trouble with time management and remembering due dates, the most important feature is right here in your notifications option. You can choose one of the preset notifications in the list below, or you can choose to create your own custom notification that's tailored to your needs. The next option available to you will be your out of office option. Now, I know some of you may be thinking that you're not attending work at this time, but you can also repurpose your out of office option to keep track of missed school days or even missed assignments. Next up, you will find your reminder tab. You may find that this will be your most used of all your other calendar options. Here in the Reminder tab, you can jot down quick ideas, lists, and even small notes. Next is your Tasks tab. Now think of your Tasks tab as a place to keep track of everything that you need to get done throughout the day or your overall to-do list. And last and not least, your Appointments tab. The Appointments tab can be used to save the date for any meetings or conferences that you may have with staff or students. <laughs> 